Good evening people of the Great Southern Land, people of the world. I'm just bringing a video to you. Uh, first I want to give thanks to my Divine Creator for giving me the opportunity to deliver this message. And I want to give glory to the Divine Creator. And I bring this offering or this message uh, of great and dire importance to your attention by divine guidance, grace and inspiration. The objective of the message is freedom, liberty, truth and justice for all. And that the will of God be done here on earth as it is in heaven. In this free will universe, your decisions and actions are left to you alone. Bear in mind that everything is on the record. Every debt will be paid and every wrong will be made right. The reaper always gets paid. So I've told this Freemasonry and the Bible and the law and a rhyme and I'm going to try and get through. There's a lot of information uh, I'm going to try and get through. And a lot of it comes from this Bible here uh, and this Bible here. This is the Master Reference Edition. And it also comes from the Australian Law Dictionary, the Black's Law Dictionary. And I'll also share a, a rhyme that came to my mind to share. Uh, I've got to declare that I'm not a Freemason. A lot of people ask me, no, I'm not a Freemason. Uh, however, I'm spiritually connected to the light or the order. Uh, being I'm a natural 33, life path, born at 1336 in local time, or 0336 universal time, all symbolic numbers in masonry. My brother Joseph, sister Mary Ann, my father's a builder, my name, Lucas, means light and illumination, and its numbers are 33311. I'm an O negative blood type, which means I'm a universal donor or a universal healer. I'm ruled by Jupiter and Mars, Jupiter being the protector of Earth and Mars being the planet of war. Before I was in the army for approximately eight years, and after that, I started doing healings through breath work and sound healing and meditations for people. My confirmation name is Zachariah and I live in the Pyrenees 3371, which is the land that Jesus walked on 11.111 hectares exactly at a place called the Ark Sanctuary. We will talk about liberty, we will talk about law, we will talk about Bible, we will talk about Freemason principles in light of all of the videos that I'm seeing being made against Freemasonry, yet what I'm reading and their principles does not align with what I'm hearing in the videos. So we will talk about liberty, truth, we'll talk about a mason's charge, we'll talk about principles. First I want to read, and, and, and on truth we go to John chapter 8 verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if my will to speak the words of unity and peace and truth and freedom and justice, if those desires in me condemn me in the eyes of others as evil, then so be it. That is something I'm willing to discuss with my creator. And then I'll read the verse Isaiah. 
61 1 this is from the master reference edition the spirit of the lord god is upon me because the lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound I will now read through a mason's charge as per their Bible. I'll then go through some of the principles and then I will share my rhyme and then we will go into some biblical verses and then we will go into common law and statutory law. So bear with me please and I will not be going through comments at this time because I've got so much to get through but I will endeavour to go through them at a later stage. This is the rule and guide for our faith and practice. A Mason's Charge My brother, upon reflection you will remember that among the first things which you discovered in the lodge on being brought to the light as a Mason was a holy Bible open upon the altar. You were told that it is our volume of sacred law and the great light of the lodge. Upon it you took your obligations as a mason, and you were exhort exhorted to make it the rule of your faith and your guide in the practice of brotherly love, relief and truth, which are the aims of our ancient order. At each step in your advancement, you were reminded that the Bible is the wisest teacher of man, directing his feet to the temple of virtue in which alone he can find liberty and peace. Words from the Bible are heard as we enter upon each of the degrees. Its truth adds lustre to every tool and symbol of the lodge. Its light is to glory of the craft. To defend, preserve and obey the Bible is the first duty of every mason from the highest officer to the humblest workman wise men of every creed agree that in the bible are to be found those truths of faith and laws of morality upon which to build an upright character since it is the purpose of masonry to lead men to righteousness it opens the Bible upon its altars with the injunction to all its sons to study it diligently, to learn the whole duty of man upon earth and his hope of a life hereafter, urging each to follow the light he there shall find, and as he there shall find it. Our craft adopts no one system of dogma, nor does it permit the discussion of sectarian issues within its lodges. Sectarian is of or concerning a sect or bigoted or narrow-minded in following the doctrine of one sect. Yeah, so no narrow-mindedness, no bigotedness. A sect is a body of people subscribing to religious doctrines of different from others in the same religion. So again, our craft adopts no one system of dogma, nor does it permit the discussion of sectarian issues within its lodges, as what never yet conduced to the welfare of the lodge, nor ever will. Instead, it encourages each man to be steadfast in the faith his heart loves best, and to allow all his brethren the same right. Like a mother, he takes us by the hand, leads us to the altar, and points us to the open Bible, the cornerstone of our faith. The keystone of our hope 
Keep it as a treasure. Live with it as a friend. Its truths are holy. Its laws are binding. Its spirit is the breath of God. Read it often. Follow it honestly. Trust it utterly. And learn that the duty of man is to do justly. To love mercy and to walk humbly with God. And further in the Master Reference Edition, at the beginning, a godly number of historical documents relating to Freemasonry and dating from the 18th back to the 14th centuries have been preserved in the archives of England. These documents bear testimony to, and I've admitted, omitted some there, and to the far-reaching influence of Freemasonry favouring freedom, liberty, justice and righteousness. And I will share some Bible verses. Please decide if they resonate with these words I just shared. Namely, freedom, liberty, justice and righteousness. Again, these are the laws they are bound by. But among freedom, liberty and justice and righteousness, the Bible speaks of obedience and condones slavery, so it appears. Which would be a contradiction of itself. But is it possible the Bible has been compromised in order to deceive by a great deceiver? Yes, it is possible. Perhaps not all, but some. Perhaps there are many truths which resonate and they may be mixed with lies to deceive and control in the interests of power. Some that conflict with liberty and freedom versus slavery. Classism and separation versus love thy neighbour as you love yourself. One of the highest principles in the Bible. Again, it is a free will universe. And, and your actions decide their bond and contract with the divine. Please bear that in mind. Brotherhood of all mankind. As per the um, Index to Freemasonry, Questions and Answers and Principles. Defraud. Does Masonry forbid fraud and dishonesty? Answer. The ethics of Freemasonry demand honesty and fair dealing with all men. And similar to the Mesoic law, rigidly forbid the defrauding of a brother Mason by another Mason. The ethics of Freemasonry demand honesty and fair dealing with all men. And I would assume that includes women. The next question or principle is ignorance. Question, does masonry discourage ignorance? Answer, the true mason seeks light that darkness may be dispelled and knowledge that ignorance may be removed. The ignorant Freemason is a drone and an encumbrance in the order. Liberty, what is the Masonic significance of this term? A fundamental of Freemasonry is liberty of thought, speech 
and action within the bounds of civil, political and conscientious law without license. Loyalty to government. Question. Does Freemasonry teach loyalty to one's government? Answer. Foremost in the first charge given to an apprentice Mason is the solemn requirement. In the state, you are to be a quiet and peaceful subject. True to your government and just and just to your country. You are not to countenance disloyalty or rebellion, but patiently submit to legal authority and conform with cheerfulness to the government of the country in which you live. Does that exclude, here is my question, does that exclude a foreign government purporting to be a legitimate government? Does that exclude a foreign corporation occupying the land in which you live? I would assume yes, because it explicitly states the government of the country in which you live. In the progressive degrees of Freemasonry, this charge is reinforced and strengthened. Now, just going to add my own into here. So, from the evidence I've seen, it appears that we have a foreign government occupying our government. One who is ignorant of that is a burden on the order, according to the principles of Freemasonry. All the questions and answers in the Master Reference Edition. Next question. Mercy. <clears throat> In what striking symbolic manner have we a lesson in mercy to a conquered foe? Answer. The point of a knight's Templar's sword is said to be characterised by the quality of mercy unrestrained. Symbolical of the sublime lesson of genuine, genuine chivalry that mercy to a conquered foe was an indispensable requirement of a true knight. And we go on to peace. What can masonry be appropriately considered as a society? Or can masonry be appropriately considered as a society for peace? The spirit of Freemasonry is anti antagonistic to war. Antagonistic means opposed. Its principles of the brotherhood of all mankind and its recognition of the fatherhood of God over the human race in his creation, mankind, in his creation, and in his offered grace for redemption, tend to promote goodwill and mutual, peaceful relations among the various governments of the world. Only when the freedom of mankind is at stake does Freemasonry Freemason recognise the justice of national conflicts in the high degrees of the Royal Ark and of the Knights Templar. Full obedience to the Prince of Peace is urged. Full obedience to the Prince of Peace is urged. Not slavery. We are at a time where there are national conflicts and international conflicts worldwide. So in the high degrees of the Royal Ark and of the Knights Templar, Full obedience to the Prince of Peace is urged, not to those of suppression and slavery. War. What is the attitude of Freemasonry toward war? The institutions of Freemasonry are neither political nor national, but of the political course of a Mason in his individual and private capacity, there can be no doubt. He must be a peaceable subject of the civil powers, and never be concerned in plots and conspiracies against the peace and welfare of the nation. He must be a peaceable subject of the civil powers, and never be concerned in plots and conspiracies against the peace and welfare of the nation, that is, the people. 
He must be a patriot. He should love his country with all his heart. He should serve it faithfully and cheerfully. He should take an active part in civil matters and obey the laws of the state, which is the government of the country in which he lives, made up by the people of the country in which he lives. In war, he should be ever ready to support his honour and defend it from the attacks of, his, of its enemies. In all national conflicts involving the principles of liberty, freedom and justice, the Mason makes a good soldier. He fights, of course, like every other patriotic soldier, for victory. But even so, the benign principles of Masonry extend their influences and divest the battle of many of its horrors so far as its conduct so far as his conduct is involved. When the victory is won, the conquered foe is still his brother. But the Masonic Lodge, in its organised capacity, has nothing to do with war. The din of battle, the cry for vengeance, the shout of victory, must never penetrate its portals. Its principles and dogmas teach love and fraternity among men. And if the evidence is true, this is my speech now, if the evidence is true, and we are occupied by a foreign company, occupied meaning they are at war with us, which seems apparent at this point in time, given the level of suppression and control and abuse by our government, alleged government, or by the alleged government, I should say. <clears throat> I'll now share these words given to me to deliver to you. Brothers and sisters of Freemasonry and the world have had their intelligence, altruism, fortitude, faith and beliefs tested by the light and the dark. They have taken an oath, sworn and bound by blood and spirit. They have either excelled or declined or preserved steadfast in their moral fortitude based on their knowing of and longing to return to the light, that being the divine kingdom of God. Some have been tricked, tortured, coerced, manipulated and deceived. They have been offered and received both dark and light options to wrong and right, as it is a free will universe. And the choice is theirs. They have been led to believe they must abide man-made authorities blindly to receive the blessings of the land which come from God's hand. They have been tricked and deceived into a stealth secret war against and in order to make its own country poor. They have been given free reign to choose a level of pain they will inflict upon others and those the Bible calls brothers. <clears throat> but irrespective of class, we all come from the grass. They have been led to believe by being intellectually deceived that it's only brother of the order who deserves the grace of justice, truth and peace in that order. But the truth is right. It does not lie or fight. We are all beings of the divine great light. All free and independent parts of a whole, we consciously contribute to the next collective goal. All men and women, free and equal, is how it shall be in humanity's great sequel. <clears throat> no more impromptu harassing arrests for people standing for freedom at their best. No more forced anything, for that is opposed to free will. It is the ultimate sin. And that is it 
and that is the fact. And that is in fact a breach of the peace, which serveth none except disharmony at least. It is opposed to freedom and liberty. It creates a realm of slavery for all you and me. It's all fabricated upon a lie that if you don't enslave others, someone will die. But the truth of the matter are simply the facts at hand that you're injuring God's children who for freedom they stand. Sworn to serve and uphold the Bible above all other, you recognise your journey to moral righteousness, may you discover. And the pursuit of the light as one's highest aspiration in life. Such a journey is yours and yours alone. It is achieved and done by the actions you condone. It is a responsibility that can't be given away. So God gave us a mouth for the truth we may say. Many hands make light work flow. So lead the way in your field show. Others the way to go. You serve the light and not the dark. But remain vigilant that you're not deceived to depart. So always remember to follow the light. For all that is peaceful, moral and right. In this tyranny, in this tyranny, by refusing to partake in anything your conscience suspects to be fake. Sworn in as a patriot to the country you live, environment, truth, freedom and justice is what one must give. It's written, ignorance is a burden on the order. So pay close attention as they close our free border. Let's take a moment to make a vow to honour the one true divine creator now. Let us honour that oath and solemn vow in the actions and words we transmit from now. We are all servants of divine, here to assist in this space and time. And we must be servants of the land, as she is the living mother upon which we stand. In your duties upon request, you shall extend a loving hand for all who live are God's representatives as man. You shall respect and serve and duly preserve the land, the rivers, the ocean and sand. You shall protect the skies from any poison that flies and the common people from corporate conspiracies and lies. You shall be rewarded for your moral duty if it's done with honour to preserve natural beauty. All people being representatives of God shall be treated justly as you would the Lord. All kings and queens of their own home throne are right bestowed again and again simply by being born. They are divine creators spawn. You shall preserve and protect individual sovereignty against all claims and encroachments of political authority. The people first and for foremost pay the whole show so the servant shall never steal the front row. So we better put our best foot forward toward the moral light 
if we don't agree with mass genocide. Rolled out by an organised medical mafia. Persecuted for freedom of choice and truth, they will try to come after you. Or one may remain silent if they truly believe that what is happening is the work of God and in his hands they do leave. But consider what we condone for others, we condone for ourselves. So in a mass genocide, our bodies we prepared to fells. For this is direct karma, that free will dharma. So walk in peace and do not feast on another's lamb, nor steal from his hand. Love thy neighbour as you love yourself, as that is the top of the moral shelf. And when it gets hard, as we know it will, remember these words to regain your fill. This is from St. Luke, chapter 6, verse 22. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Verse 23. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers to the prophets. God is the divine creator. Creation is the opposite of suppression or destruction. That which we see now, suppression and destruction. Creation is the opposite of that. So your creator abides creation and loves creation. Therefore, to follow and support the great creator and creation itself, we must allow and support the free expression of human potential, even if it may be unsafe. Satan does wish to suppress and thwart the free expression of creation. For people in positions of power or authority or perceived authority, what is right and what is wrong? How do we know? Right or wrong? My rights end where your rights begin. My rights end where your rights begin. Does your action, ask yourself this before you act, does your action initiate any form of harm or loss upon another, absent that other person harming somebody else? If it does, you are in the role. Am I taking away someone's free will, absent that person being in immediate danger, an immediate danger to others? If you are taking away their free will, the answer is you're in the wrong. Am I breaching the peace or initiating the act? Everything other than self-defense or remedy to a wrong already committed which did cause harm. If you're initiating an act against someone who has not caused harm or is not breaching the peace, and you initiate the act against them and cause harm or loss to them, you are in the wrong. So before you act, ask what is wrong or right. And if you weren't in that uniform, would you have a right to do it? The burden or the honour lies with you and your decisions. And we all have a path, not one and the same, 
to reach the glory of God's great divine name. You do you, and I'll be me, and upon the great light we shall see. Don't condemn the man who uses the other hand, for we both come from and return to the same great land. Now some verses out of the Bible, the Holy Bible Master Reference Edition, that binds and guides the Brotherhood of Freemasonry. Two Corinthians chapter three, sixteen and seventeen. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 17, 18, 19, and 20. Judges and officers, Shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge, judge the people with just judgment. They shall not rest judgment, they shall not respect persons, neither take a gift, for a gift doeth blind the eyes of the wise, and pervert the words of the righteous. You shall not take payment for your judgments. That which is altogether just shalt thou follow. That thou may live, mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless, nor take a widow's remnant to pledge. That's Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 24, 17. Exodus chapter 21, 14. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbour to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from my altar, that he may die. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Galatians 2, 4, chapter 2, 4. And that because of false brethren unawares bought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Galatians chapter 4.31 So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Galatians chapter 5.1 Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage or slavery. And 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. Again, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, in this, thou shall love thy neighbour as thyself. Galatians chapter 5. So I've already done that one. And some people may believe that these freedoms and liberties only apply to certain people. But then we reference peace. The question of peace, can masonry be appropriately considered as a society for peace? It's principles of the brotherhood of all mankind. The brotherhood of all mankind.
Leviticus chapter 19. 11. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shall thou profane, profane the name of thy God. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbour, neither rob him. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honour the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbour, in righteousness. St. Luke chapter 6, 36. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father is also merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. And you must be compassionate, just as your Father is compassionate. Psalms, chapter 82. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Psalms chapter 118, verse 5. In my distress I prayed to the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. Romans chapter 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Chapter 15. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Romans chapter 7, 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. I had many, um, well, one person having a go at me for cherry picking uh, verses of the Bible, which is what all ministers do all of the time. So I continued to ask and seek guidance, and I was continually told in no uncertain terms to deliver this message, whether it bring harm upon me or not. One Timothy chapter chapter eight but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Two Timothy chapter one, I like this one. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And then Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of prophecy written in this book. Let the one who is doing harm continue to do harm. 
Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. Let the one who is righteous continue to live righteously. And let the one who is holy continue to be holy. Verse 12, look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. Verse 13, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I am both the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright morning star. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's holy people. And that's all I'm going to read out of the Bible. And now I'm going to go on to statute and common law and i'm just going to try and uh, get through this pretty quick but what we're seeing at the moment is an issue in this country where statutory law is believed to take precedent over common law that is an error that is false statute law supremacy the principle is that the courts are operating on the presumption that the statute law does not override common law but it is left to the defendant the defendant to prove this yeah, because the courts are operating on the presumption that everything that comes before them does not conflict with the common law and this is what the statute law supremacy says in the concise australian law dictionary oh, sorry concise australian legal dictionary the overriding effect of statute law over common law Statute law supremacy operates subject to the presumption that in the absence of clear statements to the contrary, legislation does not override fundamental common law rights. So then we go to personal liberty, also in the Concise Australian Legal Dictionary. The right to personal liberty, also known as the right to liberty and security of the person. This is a fundamental right not to be subjected to arbitrary arrest, detention, nor deprived of freedom, except and in accordance with procedures established by law. Not all enactments purporting to be laws made by Parliament are laws, nor are they in line with procedures established by law. Okay, so I'm going to start that again. Right to personal liberty, also known as the rights to liberty and security of the person. This is a fundamental right not to be subjected to arbitrary arrest or detention, nor deprived of freedom except in accordance with procedures established by law. It's in accordance with the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The right to personal liberty is a fundamental common law right. That's Foster versus R1993-113 ALR. Let me say that again. The right to personal liberty is a fundamental common law right. And we'll go into what is personal liberty shortly. Also see the Human Rights Act 2004 ACT Section 18 and the Charter of Human Rights and Responsibilities Act 2006 Victoria Section 21. Plus section 12, which includes the freedom of movement. Section 13, the right of privacy and, re uh, uh, privacy and reputation. Section 14, freedom of thought, conscience, religion and belief, which includes the right to practice and worship freely. Also see the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and Universal Declaration of Human Rights on those things. Okay. So that's the right to personal liberty. And we will go into what liberty means shortly. So 
some other privileges and rights. Section 1589 of the Australian Law Reform Commission. Privilege in respect of self-incrimination in other proceedings. 1589. The common law privilege against self-incrimination entitles a person to refuse to answer any question or produce any document if the answer or the production would tend to incriminate that person. Although broadly referred to as a privilege against self-incrimination, the concept encompasses three distinct privileges. A privilege against self-incrimination in criminal matters, a privilege against self-exposure to a civil or administrative penalty, such as a magistrate's court perhaps, including any monetary penalty which might be imposed by a court or an administrative authority, but excluding private civil proceedings for damages, and a privilege against self-exposure to the forfeiture of an existing right, which is less commonly invoked. So these are all common law privileges or rights. A privilege against self-exposure to the forfeiture of an existing right means you don't have to expose yourself or surrender your rights. Yeah. You don't have to produce any documentation unless you've done something wrong, you've harmed somebody. Even then. But then they'll arrest you, obviously, if you don't produce documentation and they think you've done something wrong. So you are being coerced and manipulated and bullied. Let me go to the common law. Victoria Act, uh, Police Act Victoria 2013, Section 51. Duties and powers of a police officers. A police officer who has taken and subscribed the oath or made and subscribed the affirmation under Section 50 has A. The duties and powers of a constable at common law. The duties and powers of a constable at common law. So the duties of a constable or any police officer is to uphold the common law, which includes the fundamental freedoms or personal liberties guaranteed by the common law, which we're going to get into shortly. And B, any duties and powers imposed or conferred on a police officer by or under this act or any other act or by or under any subordinate instrument. But they must be within the law. And where an act says may or sh where an act says that a police officer may do a thing, that means it's up to their discretion. And it must be within the law for them to carry that out. Yes, they have the power to do it because they have the guns, but it must be within the law for them to lawfully do it. That's why the word may is there. When an act says that something shall be done, that means that it must be done. And you can see those definitions in the Acts Interpretation Act 1901, it's section 33, and the Interpretation of Legislation Act Victoria, it's section 45. And the reason I'm saying all these things is because we need the police to understand that they have a common law duty to uphold and to protect the personal liberties of the people and a moral and a spiritual duty as well. So what is liberty and personal liberty? This is according to Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. And I'm using this because the Australian Legal Dictionary does not have it in there. However, um, in accordance with uh, statutory interpretation, where words have an accepted legal meaning, they are to be interpreted in accordance with that meaning. So these are the legal meanings. 
Now, the personal liberty guaranteed by Constitution US Amendment 13 consists in the power of locomotion without imprisonment or restraint unless by due course of law. And we also have Section 92 in the Constitution of the Australian Commonwealth, which gives us right to travel unburdened and unrestricted and unrestrained by government interference. Cross borders, the right to do commerce and trade, yeah, including the right to locomotion without license and without burden. Liberty is freedom or exemption from extraneous control. Freedom from all restraints except such as are justly imposed by law. Yeah, because when the law is correct, the society is well. When the law is correct and not corrupted, but at the moment the law is corrupted or it is being misinterpreted by those enforcing it. Freedom from restraint under conditions essential to the equal enjoyment of the same right by others. Yep. So we all have a right to travel in our, in our cars. We don't have a right to just leave our car in the, in the centre of a single lane road because we're going to block the, the road and we're going to block everyone else's right to use that road have we all have a right to travel freely yep unburdened unrestricted cross borders it is also it is also defined as freedom regulated by law the absence of arbitrary restraint, not immunity from reasonable regulations and prohibitions imposed in the interests of the community. Reasonable. That doesn't mean arbitrarily just pulling anyone over and stopping people for no reason. That means having a reason, as in they're a danger because they're driving dangerously or whatever it may be. Yeah? Or they're acting dangerously in in a crowd in a, in a place so the absence of arbitrary restraint not immunity from reasonable regulations and prohibitions imposed in the interests of the community the absence of uh, correction the power of the will to follow the dictates of its unrestricted choice and to direct the external acts of the individual without restraint coercion or control from other persons and all of the definitions I'm reading out here uh, also have uh, precedence in the dictionary itself. The word liberty includes and comprehends all personal rights and their enjoyment. It embraces freedom from duress. Yeah, every time a police officer or a public officer is forcing someone to do something by threat of, you know... They're going to give you a fine or take you to court or arrest you when you haven't done anything against anybody else except possibly a written word and an act. Uh, but you haven't harmed anyone. Um, they are forcing you under duress to contract, to enter their contract, to give them your name, to give them details so they can write you a fine. That is a contract. Yeah. They are forcing you under duress, which also in the 1958 Crimes Act um yeah, let me let me read that. Crimes Act nineteen fifty eight, section nine AG, duress. A person is not guilty of a, of a relevant offence in respect of conduct carried out by him or her under duress. When you have a man or a woman standing there with a gun threatening you, you are under duress. Freedom from governmental interference in the exercise of intellect, in formation of opinions, in expression of them, and in action or inaction dictated by judgment. Freedom from government interference, yeah? Freedom from servitude, imprisonment, or restraint. Freedom in enjoyment and use of all of one's powers, faculties, and property. Freedom of assembly, 
freedom of conscience, freedom of contract, freedom of locomotion or movement, freedom of occupation, freedom of religion, freedom of speech. It also embraces the right of self-defense against unlawful violence. Yep. That's anyone trying to force anything upon you. Unless you've done something wrong and they come to arrest you because you've actually harmed somebody. Right to acquire and enjoy property. Right to acquire useful knowledge. Right to carry on business. A right to carry on business. A right to earn a livelihood in any lawful calling. A right to emigrate and if a citizen to return. A right to engage in a lawful business. To determine the price of one's labour and to fix the hours when one's place of business shall be kept open. A right to enjoy to the fullest extent the privileges and immunities given or assured by law to the people within the country. A right to forswear allegiance and expatriate oneself. Right to freely buy and sell as others may. A right to freely buy and sell as others may. A right to live and work where one will. A right to marry and have a family. A right to pursue chosen calling. And a right to use property according to owner's will. A right to pursue chosen calling. That's one that some people seem to have a real problem with. They seem to be able to not restrain themselves uh, when people are following their own calling and they feel they need to impose themselves upon those people to try and restrain or restrict or control them through fear and death threats, which I received today. Thank you, that man. So as I said to him, I will continue to cherry pick that Bible. And in that Bible, it speaks of liberty. Yeah. Does it not speak of liberty? Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I'm pretty sure the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is everywhere. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free. And don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. And when we go to the 1818 Bible, in a large place, he's commented as being in a state of liberty and freedom from my enemies. And that is why we are speaking about liberty right now, because it is written. Not only is it written in the Bible, it's written in all the law books. And it's common sense that everyone shall have their own freedom. Yeah, so far as not to encroach on anyone else's right. Yeah. Liberty in so far as it is noticed by government is restraint rather than license. It is a yielding of the individual will to that of the many. Subject to such constitutional guarantees, 
or limitations as will preserve those rights and privileges which are admitted of all men to be fundamental. I hope I hope I've sort of made these clear. I'm going to go now to the Charter of Human Rights and Responsibilities Act 2006, Victoria. Section 12, freedom of, of movement. Every person lawfully within Victoria has the right to move freely within Victoria and to enter and leave it and has the freedom to choose where to live. Person has a right to privacy. Person has a right to freedom of thought, conscience, religion and belief. That's section 14. Section 15, freedom of expression. Section 16, peaceful assembly and freedom of association. Section 17, protection of families and children. Section 21, the right to liberty and security of the person. Every person has a right to liberty and security. A person must not be subjected to arbitrary arrest or detention. A person must not be deprived of his or her liberty except on grounds and in accordance with procedures established by law. And it goes on. International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Article 9. Everyone has the right to liberty and security of person. No one shall be subjected to arbitrary arrest or detention. No one shall be deprived of his liberty except on such grounds and in accordance with such procedures as are established by law. Yeah. Not by unelected officials, not by policies and private acts of parliament. Anyone who has been the victim of unlawful arrest or detention shall have an enforceable right to compensation. And Article 11. No one shall be imprisoned merely on the ground of inability to fill a contractual obligation. Well, majority of the dealings that you have with this corporation are contractual obligations. So no one shall be imprisoned on the ground of inability to fulfill one of those contractual obligations. So unless they've actually committed a harm against someone else then they should not be imprisoned or they must not be imprisoned privacy this is article 17 no one shall be subjected to arbitrary or unlawful interference with his privacy, family, home or correspondence, nor to unlawful attacks on his honour or reputation. Everyone shall have the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. This right shall include freedom to have or adopt a religion or belief of his choice and freedom, and freedom either individually or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in worship, observance, practice and teaching. No one shall be subject to coercion which would impair his freedom to have or adopt a religion or belief of his choice. And that would go to uh, that man who was uh, threatening me today on Facebook, trying to coerce me. And take me away from my beliefs. Yeah. So. 
Liberty is one that we need to understand. Freedom and liberty, interchangeable. Common law, obligations and duties for police officers. Fundamental principle of common law is the right to personal liberty. We just went through what liberty entails. Except by procedures established by law. And to be done by law, they must be done in accordance with the Constitution, which alleges to be the supreme law of this land. Yeah? And for the Parliament to be legitimate and exist, they must be abiding the Constitution, because it is the Constitution which gives them the authority to exist in the first place. Without the Constitution and the authority to exist, they simply can't exist. Nor can their powers exceed the powers given to them by the people. The issues we're seeing now is again what I spoke about the other day, where people are in admiralty law. The system is running under admiralty law at the moment, the law of contracts. So when people are paying, making payment for things such as the 5G, such as the water, such as um, the medication, the vaccine, such as all these things, when they make payment, they are, by lawful definition, agreeing to the terms and conditions of that contract. Yeah? So if they don't want to be in that contract, they've got to stop paying it. Right? You know, I'm, I'm kind of done. I'll finish it off with uh, a couple of verses. St. John, chapter 8, 31. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And again with St. Luke, chapter 6, verse 22. Because we know it's going to get hard for people who follow that moral calling and that inner guidance to speak the truth and stand up for what is right, for moral justice, to stand up for the poor, to stand up for the meek, to stand up for the rights of the people. Yeah. Justice and truth and righteousness. And it will get hard for the people initially who do stand up and speak. But the time will come where it will no longer be hard. But bear this in mind. Once again, blessed are ye when men shall hate you. And when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you. And cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day. And leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. So please, I beg of you, go forward in love, truth, honour and integrity for peace, liberty and freedom for all divine children of God. Many blessings and peace be with you. Thank you for watching and for sharing, and for your time and comments.